Now, researchers are warning that the damaging legacy of the pandemic will mean poorer GCSE results well into the 2030s. Academics at the Universities of Exeter, Strathclyde and the London School of Economics predict that fewer than two in five pupils in England will achieve a grade five or above in English and math GCSEs. Uh, that's roughly equivalent to a grade C. Well, we're joined by maths teacher Bobby Seagull. Do you recognise, uh, good morning to you, uh, this prediction? Is this a fear that you share? Yeah, I think it's a really sort of sad indictment of the last few years in terms of um, COVID, obviously the strike's been going on. Um, but I think the numbers are staggering. So currently, Isabella Neyman, um 45% of students get a grade four, a good pass, as it were, in maths and English. Uh, and what this report by the Nuffield Foundation predicts is by 2030, so students that sort of had studied during the pandemic, that will drop by 5%. And again, sometimes in, in the media, you know, we can have a 5% drop, that's not a very large number, but that's like 30 plus thousand students, fewer students that will get good maths and GCSE English. Um, and what this means is that one, their job opportunities are much more difficult, but additional to their academic um, suffering, these students have sort of been impacted by social and emotional skills that they're not developed. Because we know that young people, they develop best with each other. We're humans, we're social beings. But because of lockdown, they had a couple of years where they were at home, on their phones, doing some work online. But the reality is, classrooms are the best environments for young people socially and academically. And this impact is going to be seen for, this report thinks, for decades to come. So actually it's something where they have made some uh, suggestions, solutions, but they said that we've got to start trying to solve this immediately rather than waiting for the fallout in a few years. Yeah, but Bobby, what I don't get is that was then, the, the, yeah. the pandemic, this is now. Um, mm -hmm. why, why can't a, a new term, new classes, everything back to normal, not put that right? Why have we got to wait six, seven, eight, nine, ten years before uh, figures readjust? Yeah, um, I think it's because if you look at where young people learn, yeah, um, they sort of learn foundation, almost like, a, almost, like, almost like a pyramid style. So young people, if they missed out your sort of foundation learning when they're five or six or seven, you might think, oh, they'll catch up with it. But that impact has a compounding impact. So by the time they get to 16, they're going to miss out on so much additional learning. And again, that foundations are lost. And again, I think we don't, so we won't see the impact until 2013, but there has to be solutions now. And again, this report, I had a read of it. They talked about equalizing policies, but understandably, we are in a tough economic budget condition. So they've got some low cost solutions. One is they said, think about tutoring by undergraduates. Could undergraduates, again, volunteering or for reasonable costs, go and support schools with tutoring? And then secondly, this suggests a bit more radical about rebalancing the school calendar year. So, you know, there's let's say 12, 13 weeks of school holiday per year. But a lot of research has shown that the six-week summer holiday actually impacts the most disadvantaged students because I've seen I just in my 10 years that. in secondary school. When you compare it with private schools, you know, they actually have longer holidays than, than the state sector, and yet their results are higher. I don't think it's got to do with periods of time off. And I think actually a lot of teachers are attracted to the profession because they get these, these breaks from, from work, essentially. I think if you were to, to shorten those holidays, for example, you might have an even bigger recruitment issue. Surely, though, there must be more that schools can do around early morning classes for those that are struggling, being able to identify, as you say, maybe getting in volunteers to tutor. And lots of parents must be um, have skills as well that they could share with the kids. Yeah, I think Isabel, you're right. It's a combination of both. But I will say on the school holiday, like, it's not about cutting the six weeks to two weeks holiday. It's maybe taking a week off there and moving it towards the October half term um, and making that two weeks instead of one week. Because, again, I think with the independent sector, generally children that are lucky enough to be in the sector, over the holidays, they might go to museums or go on trips abroad, or they might, you know, the parents might sit and read to them. Whereas, generally, students from the state sector, especially the ones from the most disadvantaged backgrounds, actually the holidays, a lot of them don't do anything. They sit at home on their phones for six weeks. So, again, it's about what one of their suggestions in this report is, reducing it by maybe a week or so. But, Isabel, you're right in terms of other things early morning breakfast clubs, additional support, getting parents in. So I think it's about schools and the education sector being creative because, again, with politics, it's all about priorities. And education is important, but money is very tight for this country. So as a nation, we're going to have to be very creative about the solutions we come for education because, again, even Mr Sunak, he said that education, he thinks, 
is the silver bullet that we have to improving this country's mm. lot generally. But Bobby, not every teacher is, is like you, and, and I hope there are so many, many teachers like you. I, you feel your energy, you're getting ready for class today, um, you, you have a, a spring in your step. Um, I hope that can be replicated. I, I think I would love to be a teacher. I'd love to go and teach history or something. And, I'd hate and, to be in your class. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I think I would, I would, I would be regarded as the fun <laughs> teacher, believe me. Um, no, no I, I think the idea of being contagious almost with yeah. your pupils, very difficult with mathematics. You know, I can't relate to you and your... Uh, but he might have got us through maths, mightn't he, Bob? No, no. Uh, I can't relate to the subject or the usefulness of the subject or anything, but, you know, we'll, we'll agree to disagree on that. But I think the responsibility on the teachers' uh, shoulders uh, is, is incredible. And um, if they do the job right and they're enthusiastic about it, mm -hmm. there's no finer job in the land, I would have thought. Oh, I agree. So, again, in my 20s, I spent my time working in the city I was a trader at Lehman Brothers, not a good choice of bank, okay. uh, and at Nomura, and I was a chartered accountant at the PwC. But my time in teaching, I would say, whilst it's had much more ups and downs, is the most rewarding thing you can do because yeah. you have that impact on a young person that can influence them for life. And occasionally, in Stratford bus station, I get I get towering six or three young man who say, hello, Mr. Siegel. I'm like, am I, am I safe? And you say, oh, sir, you taught me 10 years ago. In fact, at Stratford Cinema over the weekend, at some well, young man came to me and said, oh, are you Bobby Siegel? I thought, oh God, is it one of those fans from TV? No, oh, my name is Yaya and you taught me 10 years ago. I'm about to do geology at university. I mean, you're a really great teacher. So again, teachers can have that lifelong oh, impact on young yeah, people. Yeah, that makes me feel emotional. We can all remember our teachers that changed our lives. And you do. Every day you'll be changing children's lives. It, it is incredible. Um, you were talking about the kids that are spending their summer holidays scrolling on their phones, not doing anything, wasting all of their potential. Another teacher's been in the headlines this week. I think a head teacher in North London said, Saying he'd like to see the school day extended from 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. because he fears lots of kids are going home at three o'clock and just doom scrolling on their phone and wasting their lives and they'd be much better staying at school with their peers, doing organised sport, doing extra classes. Has he got a point? Again, I would say there is a point, but again, I can imagine it wouldn't be very popular with teachers. But again, the school day is six hours and again, I think there's a limited amount of academic knowledge that students can take on in school because if you're bombarded, for another two, three hours, you're not going to take it in. But there is a definitely an argument for having additional different types of activities, whether it's after school cricket or whether it's after school debate club. And these can be run by external organizations that come in and run these things. Because again, school is not just about the academic qualifications, which are, I still think are the most important thing, but you need young people to develop their social skills, emotional skills, money skills. And these are things which within the confines of a school curriculum, Isabel and Eamon, can be quite tricky because ultimately, Schools are responsible for getting kids through their GCSEs and other things that are the sort of social side do get cut. But yeah, I think there is an argument, but I think, yeah, if you tell teachers it's going to be 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., I think the recruitment and retention crisis might get a bit worse. Yeah, yeah well said. You're, you're absolutely right. And I suppose I'm lucky, we're, we're lucky in general that we can look back in our school years and say, happiest days of our life. Not everybody can do that. And I'm not really sure why mine were the happiest days of my life. But um, gosh, when I left school, I, I really missed it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, well done you, my friend. You have a good day at class. Thank Always you. a pleasure to talk to you and hear your, your various theories on things. And we want people... You've heard what Bobby's had to say. Get in touch with us this morning. What would make school better? What would get these exam results up again generally? What needs to happen? Let us know this morning. Have your say. Bobby Siegel, thank you thank very you. much indeed.